Hi guys and welcome to the GMBN Tech Show. This week we have our man on the ground, the Dodster, at the Core Bike Show and I will be delivering the normal treats and treasures from yourselves in the show. For the news, I'm actually going to throw to Doddy at the Core Bike Show. Now I thought for ages it was like core, but actually it's core, although there are plenty of nice bikes on offer. So let's take it away with the Dodster. Thanks Henry, yeah that's right, I've been here at Core Bike Show Silverstone at Whistlebury Hall. Uh, core is a trade UK show, I've just stepped outside to get some fresh air, it gets pretty stuffy when you've uh, just been talking bikes for the last day or so, but I saw some pretty cool stuff. First up on the screen is the new Nuke Proof Cub Scout, how cool is that? <laughs> So this is their new kids bike, it's available in 20, 24 and 26 inch wheels. Yep, 26 is not dead. And it's available in two specs. This is the better spec that you can see here. I think you'll agree with me, it is pretty badass as far as kids bikes go. Uh, there's also a cheaper spec that comes with rigid forks. There's a launch video coming later this week, it's seriously cool. Uh, look out for that and there's going to be full details shared soon. Next up, another thing I spotted in the Nuke Proof room were the new Horizon bars. Now they're available in carbon and alloy in three rises. Uh, in the alloy ones, they're available in 800 millimeters only, but you've got cut marks on them. And the risers are 12, 25, and 38 millimeters. Same risers apply to the carbon ones, only the lengths come in 780 or 800 mil. Something especially cool about them that I've not yet seen on other people's bars are the fact that due to the rake they have on them, effectively you're reducing your reach slightly on the bike. So the mounting for them, the clamp area, is basically slightly offset. So they're slightly further forwards than you might expect. And it kind of basically takes your reach back, but gives you that nice sweep or rake on the bars. Uh, pretty cool feature, that. Okay, next up, as you can see on screen right now is Ben Deakin's custom DMR sled, a full camo paint job, kind of a bit of nod back to Ben's military past, I guess you could say. Uh, it all started with a saddle and then it got a bit carried away with things with oi oi camo all over it. Uh, it's got a custom rapid racer, bolt on like a direct mount mudguard on there. Uh, it's got a coil spring on the rear uh, along with that shock. Feels amazing actually, the back end on that thing. Um, and also there's a bunch of obscure camo shapes around the bike. Uh, if you get a chance, have a look at some close-ups and you might see what I'm talking about. Look under the bottom bracket there. Uh, also a cool little touch on it is uh, the Rolls-Royce style logo and it says roll it on there. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about with the Roll It thing, it's one of the funniest video clips of 2019. Uh, the link to it is in the description under here. It's off Matt Jones's Instagram page and literally is one of the funniest things ever. Um, also, Ben's got another bike coming out later this week or maybe the week after. Um, he's given us an exclusive look at the bike and also the eagle-eyed amongst you might have seen it being built in the background of the GoPro clip he sent us for the action cam video I made last weekend. So you can have a little preview of it in there. But I've got to tell you, this thing in the flesh is seriously loud and it looks amazing. Next up, straight on the screen there, is those Hope Jewel brake levers. Uh, so Tom Wheeler really would be a person that could maximise on using these. It enables you to use one hand to operate both brake calipers. It's a flip-flop design, so it goes either side of the bars and you can flip the levers into whichever orientation you like. Lovely bit of kit and so cool to see Hope making that. Uh, also notice they've got some e-bike cranks and e-bike rings. Uh, it's a bit more EMBN, but they're always basically making new gear, so super cool to see that. Uh, okay. Another one on the screen, the new Michelin tyres, finally the Sam Hill style DH22s, DH34s, they're available now. Uh, they're going to be about 60 quid here in the UK, uh, they come in 29 and 27 and a half and in the 2.4 size in that crazy soft compound with that rigid downhill casing. Um, also the SDG Bel Air saddle, this is the retro one, 25 years old, I had one of those, can't believe it's 25 years old as a saddle, uh, and this is the new one. The new one is seriously nice. Um, it's all thermo well technology, a beautiful underneath. It's got the same profile on the top though. So if you've ever had a Bel Air and you got on with it, you're gonna love that new one too. Uh, there's also a carbon rail super light version. Uh, Magura are now doing 220 millimeter rotors. So if you need extra power or you've got an e-bike or something like that, they're the ones to go for. So that's a floating rotor. They retail around 50 quid, but they're also doing a heavy duty rotor designed for e-bikes or high stress applications, maybe trials or something like that. Uh, they're a single piece, heavy duty, and they're a quiet design, uh, and they cost about 25 quid. And also they're pumping out their race line, which is the neon yellow caliper and leave details. There's a thousand pairs globally. So if you want to set those to look like Danny McCaskill or any one of those guys that uses uh, all the sort of Magura stuff, then check them out. Very, very cool. 
Okay, two more cool things. Uh, firstly, the Bomber Z1 on the screen right now. Um, I've just ordered one of those actually, because I think it looks like a sick for coil. I'm gonna do a bit of a coil versus air style feature here on tech. Um, what I was wrong about last time though, I said that the kit didn't fit any other, any Fox forks, but it does fit the Fox Rhythm 36. So you can do that kit conversion if you wanna run coil in your Fox 36 Rhythm. Uh, and the last cool thing is these, this new proof reactor. Uh, it's the same frame that I've got, although this is the prototype version and it's painted up like that 1997 hard, basically the hardtail bike that they, they showed us last year that we put in. I think uh, Retro Week I showed it off, uh, but here it is. Um, look at the paint job on this thing, it looks amazing. Fork decals done by Slick Design, so they can do custom stuff for you as well if you're interested. Uh, check them out. What a cool selection of stuff. Hell's teeth, some of that. So, on to Bike Cave. So, now it is time for Bike Cave. Now, this is the segment where we get to showcase your bike caves. So, if you're at home and you think you've got an absolute belter, then get in the upload link in the description. So, hopefully, we can show the whole world your bike cave in all its glory. So, getting gonna get straight into it this week. And our first submission is from David. He is from Brisbane, Australia. And this is actually pretty cool because it's, well, it's not your normal bike cave, it is immediately obvious, but it's just showing him working in his hotel room. And it, for me, it just brought back a lot of memories because when you're on test camps with teams and you don't have a you know, secure overnight location, it starts off the bikes come into the apartment and then when they're in the apartment, you inevitably end up tinkering on them. And I've worked on so many bikes like this, I just thought it was really cool. It sounds like he's got a really, really great relationship with the hotel. They actually took delivery of his bike for him, let him keep it in his room. It sounds absolutely awesome. And here he's just doing a bleed. I noticed he's been very liberal with the towels, both on the disc rotor, as well as protecting the floor, which is probably a good idea. But I just think it looks great. Really, really nice. I actually used to have one of those strives myself, so I think they're a fantastic looking bike. And yeah, I just think it's really, really cool. What he's doing here is he's just doing a quick lever bleed after swapping around the hoses. So depending where you're from, and I think where your country, drive, which side of the road it drives on, some people, when you drive on the left-hand side, tend to have your left-hand brake on the back. When you drive on the right-hand side, it tends to be the right-hand brake. So he just needs to swap that because he's actually um, taken delivery from a bike in a different place. But yeah, super cool. And on to the next one, which is another Australian submission. I think there's a bit of a theme this week from Isaac in Cairns. And he's basically just kind of slowly rebuilding a Scott reflex for his dad. And I'm in, this is pretty, well, it's about as open air as you could get. Now Cairns is not only hot, but it's very, very humid. With me and my friends, I famously turn into a bacon rasher in anything about above 15 degrees. And I've got some friends in Cairns who are always saying to come down because I would not only enjoy the riding, but I'd be amazed at how hot it is. And yeah, it certainly looks pretty cool. This is probably one of the most um, open aired and potentially for, you know, especially UK viewers, you know, somewhat alarmed because we're using to have to put our bikes, you know, under lock and key in a kind of a Russian doll situation of smaller and smaller, more secure containers. But this is open air, baby. It's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it looks really sweet. We've got a little shadow board, his helmet's hanging up. Yeah, it looks great. So what we got, we got, I think that's a giant Liv, maybe two giants and a Scott, some frames hanging up. <laughs> I think that's a dead snake. I don't, I don't know if it's dead. It's definitely a snake in the photo, which is very, you know, apt for Australia, which is pretty cool. And um, on to the next one, which is from Hampus in Gothenburg in Sweden. So I imagine it's kind of the other end of the spectrum in regards to weather at the moment. And I think this one is pretty special. I believe, and I might be mistaken, but this is the first ever bike cave with a chandelier, which is quite highbrow. It's good to see you know, a certain element of class that maybe we've been missing, but it's really cool. Such an efficient use of space. And I think it's really cool. Very well stocked up, very well ordered. Got a nice little Marshall amp, which I guess is kind of a Bluetooth speaker or something and everything. I mean, yeah, it's, it uh, looks really cool. Kind of nicely backlitted, kind of high drama, high tension, 
but nah, I think it looks really good. And those Lapierres were really, really cool bikes. I also notice what's really, really cool is the level of organization with the tires. He's got the tire, he's rolled it up, put tape, looks like he's labeled it. And I think that's really cool. It's um, actually one time I lost my mind a bit and I started um, compulsively. I, I had this theory that when I was working on teams where we stored the tires could be quite warm and had this theory they were drying out. So I started doing that with the tires and then I started wrapping them in cling film <laughs> and it kind of got a bit far. But I do think there's something in it if you can keep the tires you know, not just drying out with lots of surface area exposed to the heat, I think it's gonna be a good idea. And there we have it, another bike cave all wrapped up, pretty varied, I think you'll agree. As always guys, get in your bike caves, send them in using the upload link, and like I said, hopefully we can feature it on the show. You know, maybe not many dead snakes, that's up to you, but we'll see how we go. And for Rewind, it is back to a core bike. Okay, now it's time for Rewind. Uh, there's two Yeti bikes I'm gonna show you on this show. One of them's in Tech of the Week, and the first one you're gonna see now is this one. It's a Yeti Arc. Just look at the thing. That is just the definition of cool AF. Right, so it's from about 1992. It's got the Manitou 2 on the front, Ringlay seat post, Ringlay QR lever, uh, flight titanium rail saddle, uh, Ringlay Zuki stem. I think that's a Chris King. Uh, headset I can't quite see from here. Uh, it's got the Ringlay bottle cage on there, Grafton cranks, original XT pedals, XTR derailleur. Uh, it's even got Tioga disc drive on the back, which is just, I need to have one of those on my retro build. And it's got my favorite tires of that era, Richie Z Max, the WCS edition, which is kind of like a red brown rubber, tan walls. Oh my God. It's even got an anti chainsuck plate under there, an aluminium chainsuck plate. That's something we don't really get these days. Um, it's got really cool Uri grips on there, answer hyperlight bars. And it's also got a pair of Grafton rapid fire like pod mounts on there. Super rare. They are hen's teeth. Um, but that is just a beautiful, beautiful example of a retro bike. Uh, the eagle eyed amongst you might have noticed there's a bike build video um, floating around that G Milner did with this very bike. Uh, if you want to geek out some retro tech, that's a good one to look. Uh, might chuck a link in the description underneath. Uh, enjoy. And now we have Top Mods, which is one of my personal favorites. And this week, I mentioned it before, but we've got a real strong Aussie theme. First up, you know, straight into the action, we're going from Jay in Brisbane again. And just looking at the first picture, I am having severe jealousy pangs as I look at it, because it looks so warm. We've had actually a pretty mild winter here, but it's been my first winter in years. And so I'm kind of struggling to adapt in some ways. So I look at all this and I do get a bit jealous. But he says, he's an English guy living in Oz and he wanted to build up his own bike. And DMR was a brand that he rode when you know he was a teenager. So he's gone for like a rental bar and stem, XT brakes, you know, 12 speed group set and which is kind of pride and place on the front of the bike a rock shocks lyric in that red and it looks really really cool i think there's something about a red fork it's so funny isn't it how it kind of it changes now each brand seems to have their own color and when it first happened i thought yeah i'm not so keen but now i think an understated frame and a big old red fork kind of like a rudolph setup I just think it's really, really cool. And this bike in particular looks fantastic. So I'm loving your work, Jay. Since it's got built up by the local bike shop and it looks like they've done a pretty good job indeed. Next, another Aussie from New Brunswick and it is Simon. And he has sent in some photos of his 2018 Carbon Giant Rain with a really nice custom spec. Now, first picture, I don't know if it's witchcraft, 29 pounds, and it's like 160, 170, 180 mil, depending what fork he's got in it, enduro bike, and it's 29 pounds. I think, I don't know what I've done wrong, but I always accidentally build up my bikes really heavy, and it doesn't necessarily bother me, but I do look at some people and they have their bikes so light, and I just think, with a coil spring, how, 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 where, where does it go? But it's certainly pretty cool, and those reins are really, really lovely bikes. So let's look at the spec. I mean, it's pretty, pretty well decked out. It's got the, you know, big 36s, the Mavics, everything. And I think, honestly, that's, that's pretty nice, eh? 
It's pretty nice indeed. Ooh, got a nice uh, relaxing candid shot of the beach. Clearly, you know, a man knows how to get a nice photo of a bike, but no, really, really cool. Now, bringing it back to the Northern Hemisphere, we have a submission from Stefan. Now this is really, really cool. So, a bit of a backstory. He says, not long ago, he got his first full suspension bike and after years of hardtail. Now, everything on suspension, he found a little bit touchy-feely, so I think he means it was based on a lot of kind of user experience, but he's an engineer and he, so he looked for a better way. So basically, he's fitted his bike out with a couple of accelerometers on the lowers, on the stays, and on the handlebars. And he's built his own telemetry system, which is absolutely fantastic. I think it's super cool. He said he wasn't that fussed about kind of how waterproof the system was, because he wants to just kind of have it for a couple of rides and get it working well, and he's not gonna, you know, run it all year round. But I just think that's super cool. So the way a system like this works is it uses the accelerometers near the axles and the accelerometer on the handlebars. Now, with no suspension, when these go up very quick, the handlebars would rise very quickly and you could measure the force. But what you can do with suspension is you can measure the difference between the axle speed on the unsprung part of the bike and the sprung part of the bike, and you can extrapolate a whole lot of data about compression, rebound, well, so much stuff. Now, I've done a bit of telemetry testing and it's hopefully something we can do on the channel at some point to find out how much faster it makes you. And it was always really, really interesting. I always really enjoyed it, especially because, you know, when you're puzzling out, especially when you're working with another rider and you're talking about ideas of setup or, you know, bouncing ideas off each other, that's a lot of fun. It's a really good process. But when you've got a third voice, it's an engineer with the telemetry charts, it just makes it that kind of bit more kind of F1 highbrow. It's kind of cool. And, um, and some of the time savings you can make when you link it with a, you know, obviously a timed re repeated run, it was really quite impressive. So um, I'd love to give it a go myself. I don't know if maybe I can put the bike through its paces enough compared to the pros, but I'd love to see if an average Joe like me can really refine their setup using telemetry and science. So it should be bloody good. Now that's it from Top Mods this week. As always guys, I mean, I love these. You can tell I get pretty kind of passionate about them. Get in the uploaded link below and send in your own. They don't all have to be a telemetry system that you've made at home. It could be something more simple, maybe something a bit more basic, but as long as it's a bike, you love it and you work on it, we want to hear about it. Okay, tech of the week, um, quite simply, is this beautiful Yeti SB100. So this has been built up specifically for the owner of, uh, basically the UK importer. His name's Darren and he's going out to do BC bike race in 2020. Well, firstly, good luck, Darren. That's supposed to be a mega hard race and mega cool. Uh, you've picked the right bike for it, I think. So it's 100 mil travel. And although it's cross country travel, that is a really burly bike. So I think you made a great choice here. Absolutely love the paint job on it. That looks reminiscent of those old Yeti arcs. So the grey back on the front, uh, grey back end on there. It's gone for silver spokes to kind of look like a bit retro thing. Lots of purple anodizing, and get a load of the seat post on it. So Woody from Hope Technology custom anodizer like the Fox seat post has left the Kashima, got a purple clamp and a purple lower. That is sick. I absolutely love that. Danger is though, some more people are going to want those. I can feel. Um, it's just an absolutely beautiful bike. Here's just some more details of it. Um, let us know what you think of that. Do you reckon that's one of the coolest sort of down country style bikes you've ever seen? Um, let us know in those comments. And that is it from this week's GMBN Tech Show. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Let us know what you think of some of those bikes at the Core Bike Show. Now I'm gonna throw you to some pretty cool videos. If you want to see Doddy sweat like a mafioso in a sauna, click down here to see him on his turbo. And if you wanna see how to maximize the potential of your GoPro and other camera accessories, click down here. As always guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thank you.